Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. This is Home Show Radio live on Facebook and YouTube. Your questions, Tom's answers. Now here's Tom Tynan and Charlie Mosier. And we start by telling you that I'm on the radio here in Houston. I've been doing this for 35 years, answering your questions, and I do it live on the radio. But today, I do it live here. It's called Ask Tom Live. So we've expanded from just the voice to the picture of me. Ooh. Okay. Now that, uh oh, everybody's where just am I? Okay, wait, sound, forget that. Forget that. Where are my sound effects when I need them? <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know. But don't use them. I, I, I take it back, I promise. I just got canceled by two people. Anyway, <laughs> I want you to join us if you have home improvement questions. If you're interested in home improvements, we're going to be answering questions from our website, homeshowradio.com. I do answer questions on the weekend, Saturday from 9 to 12, and Sunday from 8 to 11 on Sports Radio 610 in the Houston area. But you can listen if you'd like to, or you can uh, uh, podcast. It, whatever. It's a podcast. I'm not sure what it is. But Charlie, who's going to come up here in a second, will help me with that. But you can listen to it live by going to homeshowradio.com. And let me quickly get Danny up. Also, before me on Saturday, we have our guru of gardening, and it's Danny Milliken. And he's on from 7 to 9. I go on at 9 o'clock on Saturdays on Sports Radio 610. Wow. So comprehensive it was that introduction. I'm not really impressed. No, but okay. we do podcast. We, we, there's a... Um, we have several podcasts, in fact, and in fact, oh. the the uh, I was talking to the Brain Trust this week, and we're thinking about putting this one, the the audio of this up as a podcast as well. So, you know, I, I have a YouTube channel, I have a Facebook Live channel, I have a podcast. I don't know what any of them are. Right. I just was told right. they sent me here. Uh, there's guys, two guys with shotguns, telling me I can't move. And I just do this, and then they take me away and put me back in my cage. Right. We put him back in stasis for the week, and then we bring him <laughs> back out. That's how, nice. that's how he stays looking young so long. So, no, yeah, actually. It's like going to oxygen, the yeah, oxygen chamber. <laughs> <It's> a, oh. <laughs> no, no. It's, it, but the, seriously, there's, we're going to get you a TikTok channel next, and uh, you can start doing the oh, dancing Lord. thing and all that. It's dancing home improvements. That's our deal. Yeah, or maybe. Okay. Maybe better if we did uh, news of home improvement. Yes, around the world and up your block with all the home improvement news you could ever want. This week's feature, Tom, is something near and dear to everybody's heart, and that is lumber prices, and they are falling fast, according I to Wall Street Journal. Yeah, yeah, and it's at the, uh, the what what goes up must come down, and it is coming down. Though they're saying that the futures for July are down forty one percent. And that means that uh, they're selling for about $1,000 a board foot, which is a decline, and the price has gone down 14 of the past 16 days. And yeah, but $1,000 back to where it was before, we're going to have to wait a few more days. Well, in fact, days. funny you should say that, because yes. the price for cash lumber is also dropping, what they call the on-the-spot market, where right. people come in and they buy it quick. That's dropped $122 as well in the last few weeks. And the and the index rose, to give you an idea, back in May, the index rose $124 in the first week of May. So it's gone up and it's come down, but can it keep going? Now this now this will give you a bet, real good idea what we're talking about as far as the spike. You can see that if you go back to May, how that thing spiked up and it's come down, but it's not going to necessarily come down enough to to work for us because what's happened now is the tables have turned. What I read in the Wall Street Journal is that the uh, builders had gone out and started hoarding the lumber and running up the prices. <laughs> um, and then the price started dropping. So now, and they did it to avoid running out of materials. I mean, that's the fact. I mean, the sooner they buy their materials, like we're having some remodeling done at our house and thankfully they'd already bought the lumber. So we were in, in, you know, we were in, insulated from this, but now that they've bought it and the price is dropping, they're now going to be sitting on lumber that is worth that they can't sell. So now yes. what they're trying to do is they've created what's called shadow inventory that's out there that that isn't showing up in any of these index numbers as the builders sell off their stockpiles. So what they expect to happen, what the forecast calls for, as far as you know, obviously the price is being held up 
by builders struggling to meet the demand. Um, Freddie Mac, according to Freddie Mac, we're up, uh, there are about 3.8 million houses shy of what the market is demanding. And so lumber, Warehouser is saying that lumber could float at about $1,000 as a new normal, but most producers are saying it's most, most likely going to land about seven or $800. What that means is before the pandemic, lumber was selling for $639. So is that, is that a jump or is it really more of a historic marching forward in a historical pattern? And that's what they're saying about lumber prices, that it's it, 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 it took a spike, it came down, it's not going to quite land where it was, and uh, we're going to be at about that seven to $800 price point. So what's that going to mean to a home, Tom? <clears throat> well, first off, I think people are too fixated on the lumber because, uh, first off, my, 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 my thought is, how many guys playing the commodity markets got rich off this thing <laughs> how many lost their shirt i don't know i don't play the a market, whole bunch I, but whole i watch bunch. trading places with eddie murphy and i know that you can make a lot of money in commodities and orange juice right i bet you a uh, dollar and, and lumber yeah whatever the case is on that but it's more than just lumber it's the price of everything uh i went to uh lowe's to get some stuff for my electrical program and i finally am finding cases of just the plastic boxes they're about double the price not a big deal 40 50 cents more a box i saw the wire still way up in price so it's more than just lumber i think lumber is going to be the least of the worries when it's all said and done it's availability of a lot of other things that make construction materials like resins and glues and all these other uh, uh, issues that we're having that will keep the market going slow as far as building. But I think lumber saw its high day and, and it was it came down and it's going to be a little more expensive. But isn't gas more expensive? Isn't milk more expensive? Everything's percentage points higher. So I think that's pretty true for what would have happened anyway, whether we had that up and down mm -hmm. or not. I would say yeah. I, would, I, 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 I call a little I take exception to that because We've seen wholesale prices jump the highest they've ever jumped uh, in the last month um, in recorded history. So does that mean inflation is coming when you see the Fed start and talk about bumping up interest rates to to put the brakes on inflation? Yeah, I think that everything connects. It's all connected. And yeah, will will lumber will, is lumber uh, a an accelerant to this or a a flashpoint that's driving this? Who knows? We'll see. Time, I don't time know if it's a tell. flashpoint. I think people are more fixated because lumber was never the big cost on a house. Mm -hmm. Other things like granite and, and cabinets and all this. Well, cabinets have lumber, but all these other things were. And I think that's going to be the least of our worries for higher prices for building. I think the building prices will still high, higher, stay higher than they were before, but it'll not be because of lumber. I think it's going to be because of a lot of other things like roofing materials and things of this nature, especially mm -hmm. oil related. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is how much of it's oil related. All right. Next week on uh, the news segment, we're going to talk about some interesting factoids about resale values of houses and where they're up and what's down and all that. So that'll be next week. On What's News! I got to get my money out of this music, okay? I can tell. I spent, I okay. spent $15 on that song. I'm going to make sure. Well, we, we use already it. spent 50. We already made 50 cents back already. He's like right. lumber <laughs> all the time. Okay. <laughs> right. Nailed it. All right. You got a question? Go ahead. And um, oh, by the way, you remember that last week, that picture we put up of the on the Facebook page of the guy who poured the concrete around his condenser? I do. Yeah, we got it. What's his? Hang on. Let me find this here. Oh, John in Bear Creek wrote to us. He says, concrete wisdom. He learned this. A carpenter once told me it's not a mistake until it's poured. That's true. <laughs> so it's that's very it unforgiving. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you're if you're wondering what we're talking about, if you go to our Facebook page and scroll, you have to scroll up a little bit to find it. But there's a picture of someone who didn't want to wait to move his condenser to pour a concrete deck. And frankly, he's going to have to anyway, because when you look at that deck, I don't think you'd be happy with it. So. Well, and, and the fact is, when people look at that picture, if any of you do, don't just look at the condenser because that's kind of a mess. But that actually could be ground and straightened out pretty easily with a hand grinder. It's the whole finish of the whole pour, yeah. which shows you that it, it was never going to be right, whether they move the condenser or not. 
I think this was a disaster waiting to happen, whether it was there or not. It's I don't not think the it's condenser's waiting. fault. Yeah, I don't think it's waiting. I think it's I think it's a disaster it's at full now. steam. You bet. Yep. All right. So what we want to do is if you have questions, go ahead and send them to us. Go, put them in the comments section down there, and uh, we'll be happy to put them up, and Tom can answer them to help you out today. In the meantime, we'll, we got some questions here from our right. Ask Tom section, homeshowradio.com. If you go there, there's a button, Ask Tom. You put them in there, and it can come out in one of these and the videos we place every day over there at homeshowradio.com. First question comes from Georgia in um, Willowbrook. She says, my air conditioner is not cooling. I wanna know, should I cut it off until the repair person comes out or just leave it, leave it running? What say you, Tom? Well, first off, if it's not cooling, there's no reason to run it anyway. So that would be my first just common sense thought process is open windows, get fans moving, do what you have to do to survive because obviously it's not cooling. The second thing is equipment wise, yes, it's it's like when you hear the when you see the check engine light come on in your car and it starts blinking, that means stop. That doesn't mean wait till tomorrow and take it to the mechanic. If it comes on yellow, fine. If it starts red blinking, you're in big trouble. There's a time when you should just shut it off because it'll do more harm than good. So you're not getting any use out of it now anyway. Uh, it's just making noise and running some air through the ducts. You can do that with ceiling fans or another fan. And uh, don't hurt the equipment anymore. But the most important thing is, hopefully you called today and they're out this afternoon or tomorrow, whoever you called, I would say Absolute Comfort Air. If it's in the Houston area, I think- this Tim Willowbrook, uh, they was. serve your area. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. So call them and get them out there. Don't put it off because within uh, six, seven hours, you can have something that's working and you can be comfortable. There you go. And now, is this a case, Tom, where this is a time when you'd put it to fan and let the fan run to at least keep air circulator, circulating around this? I know it's gonna get warm, but at least it's going to be air moving. Okay, my comment to that is I don't think it's going to make you feel any better. If it keeps air moving, I'd rather see ceiling fans on and something that's going to really move the air, not just push some air through the little register. I don't think your body's going to feel that. Remember, your body cools with evaporative cooling, which means air over the skin. That's not going to move it much. Plus, you're moving air. If it's in the attic, you're moving air through a hot attic, so it actually could maybe heat the house up more. I don't know, but I will say this. If you did leave it on and it did make you feel more comfortable, Charlie, it's not going to hurt the unit. You can certainly leave the fan on. Okay, that's good to know. Mike has our next question here from uh, the Energy Corridor, which is kind of where I'm sitting here in that west side of Houston. Says, I'm thinking about converting my traditional pool to a saltwater pool. Do you have any recommendations on this or who to use, Tom? I know that I know that um, U.S. Pool Builder will build them one, but I don't know they convert. They don't. They don't do repair work or, or work like that. Uh, first off, I'd like to say I have a salt pool. I think it's the only way to go. If you talk to Colt, the owner of U.S. Pool Builder, uh, he loves doing salt pools for his clients too. Uh, there are companies out there that will convert your pool. They are usually pool remodelers and people in the pool equipment business. Some of the big chains in town. I use one called Texan that takes care of my pool. They do a great job. And that could be at one of the companies you could call to get an estimate on what it would take. There's some other uh, chains you'll see in town that, that have stores all over. They do lots of repair work and lots of retrofitting of equipment. So that's what they're in the business to do. So it's not hard to find someone, uh, but it's hard to find companies who are building pools that do that kind of work. You have to go to someone that's in the chemical business, maintenance business, uh, cleaning business, and there's a bunch of companies out there. You might even ask if you have a friend that has a pool or if you have a guy taking care of your pool, if he has uh, someone that they know or you know uh, that does this kind of retrofitting of equipment. How much how much retrofit is there to it? I mean, do, do you still have it's a not, DE filter on a salt pool? Do you have... You know, yeah, you, you still have a filter. This does not take right. place of the filter. That's a great All question. Right. I have a cartridge filter. You can have a DE filter. Uh, whatever the filter is, you still have to have a filter. That doesn't yeah, get okay. replaced. Uh, what it does is you use less chlorine. You use some, and a pool is balanced differently, so you don't have all that chlorine in your pool. So your pool is maintained chemistry-wise through a combination of salt, which turns it into a chlorine uh, through this process, and they can explain it to you when you look at the equipment. Uh, when it gets into chemical engineering, I, I step back because the words are too big and too long. Uh, but as far as that goes, little chlorine, more salt, acid's different, uh, basic uh, water chemistry is different, but it's so much better on your skin. 
I always relate it to soft water in your home mm. because you do have a little salt residue in there and it does do a different type of conditioning of the water and so does the salt pool. So when you get out, you're not running to the shower, your skin's not all dried up, it's not all cracked, your eyes don't turn all red from opening them up under the water. It's very comfortable. I would love to get, I would love, if I was going to get a pool, it would be a salt water pool. <laughs> Ooh, that's the first time I ever heard you say anything about getting a pool even close. If I was, if I was going to get a pool, <laughs> if, if. you know, if I <laughs> fell down the stairs and I hit my head that's and qualified. I got up and I said, I need a pool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, I should explain. I had a bad experience with the pool. Yes. And it, and it gave me a jaundiced view of them ever since. And my wife had a, a, a almost a maintenance free experience with the pool. So we have a very different way of looking at pools, but yes. I would rather travel and swim in the ocean. But I can tell you this, if you want a pool, call U.S. Pool Builders. Colt will give you one that will be on the wife's side, not the Charlie's side. Well, and, and, and he'll come out and he'll brainstorm with you, give you all kinds of ideas. Right. And, and his whole process is really, is really good. If you're looking for any kind of pro, you can go to homeshowradio.com right there. Scroll up. You'll find all our home show pros on the website, on the homepage. These are people we've checked out. If you're not sure who, but you know what? Come here and you can search by category too. We've organized them that way for you too. The the key thing to know about a home show pro is that there's somebody who meets all of Tom's standards and, and what Tom thinks imp are important. And uh, someone named Sandy Mojer just wrote in and said, I heard Charlie say pool. No, 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 no. I said, I don't want to be anybody's fool. See, if I was ever going to build if a pool. If I was ever so going Sandy, to. So Sandy, it's going to be a salt pool. So put that check box, salt pool. Our next question <laughs> yes. comes from Tom. St. Kima. He says, my house is on piers down here and there's a, a low spot on the concrete slab underneath that holds water after a hard rain. Is this a hard fix, Tom? You really can't do much about it unless you poured three inches of concrete on top of it and, and crowned it so it wouldn't do that. I don't know of a house down in near the coast, whether it's Galveston, Kima, wherever it might be on stilts, that doesn't have a low spot on that concrete poured and it has a little bit of residual that will sit there a little while. If you want to, like I always did with my house, take a push broom and push it off the side. It'll dry up pretty quick down there. But to fix it and try to fill it, the only thing I could tell you to do that would be expensive, but you might have a very expensive home that is worthy of this. My house wasn't, is put down one of those commercial coatings under the house. So you have a nice walking surface. You have different color choices and they can fill those low spots and then put the coating on top. That would be one way to handle it if your house justified the cost or if you just wanted to have it and had a little extra money in your pocket. So you'd use it almost like a leveling compound to kind of they'll level, level it first right. and then they'll put the coating on top. But if you just put some leveling compound there, you're going to see these nasty patches all over it, the place. And if you drive mm -hmm. a car on it, it's not going to work right. It's, it's just not a good thing. Is, is that slab under there part I mean, if the house is up on stilts, is that consi still considered part of the structure or could like you get, could you get, um, um, who's the concrete guy that raises them? Um, our guy. No, Concrete Raising Corporation. That's the one, Concrete that, Raising okay? Corporation. But they those, couldn't those, fix that. The reason is it's, it's one piece oh, and okay. they can raise different pieces back and forth you know how you have the the expansion joints and the sidewalk cuts and stuff like that but when it comes to making a piece of concrete that's like this push it up like that that's not something that would be in their realm now they could take the whole backside maybe and pick it up they can't really with the stilts going through it mm -hmm. and then tilt it one way to the front but that wouldn't be an option for something like that because what happens is you build the house you have the things in the ground then you pour the concrete pad all the way around it so if you tried to move it, it's around those concrete posts and those square posts, mm -hmm. and it would start jacking everything around and cracking it up. It's not something I think they yeah. would touch at all. It's not real flexible. It's why they call it concrete. No, it's pretty much in there. But yeah. I would tell people this, and they ignore that at the end because yeah. they're sorry to get in. And that's a really important part to make sure it's all sloped right. That goes mm. back to that pour around that condenser. The finishers are really important. One experienced finisher, two helpers. For every 1,000 square feet of concrete pour, just remember that. The largest convention in Orlando every year is Concrete World. 
It is ah. a they and they. I think they go back between Orlando and Vegas. But I know in Orlando, we were there for the International Builders Show a couple of years back, and which is a you would think is a big show. And they go, oh, Concrete World is much bigger. He says, really? Concre Concrete yes. World when it comes into Orlando takes over the entire. All there is no other convention space available in Orlando, and you think how much convention space there is in Orlando. Yes. So, and it, it, it is, and concrete, we, we've talked about it before, is a, such a fascinating thing about how it, the chemical reaction and how it's continually curing, and um, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing. We, we could natter on for hours, but my wife would say, you talked too long about concrete today, Charlie. Next question comes from Linda in Spring Branch. She says, yeah, are whole home surge protectors worth the price? Her home was built back in 2015, Tom. What say you? Well, the, the, the question is, is it worth the price? It is what it is. If you want it, you're going to pay for it. So it would be worth it to some, not to others. I wouldn't have one on my house. I don't see a need for it. Some people might find a need for it. Sometimes now when the codes where you're building, they, they might even require it. In commercial buildings, it's been around for a long time as that extra protection on all the big equipment and expensive equipment that they might have, especially in manufacturing and stuff. So I can't say if it's worth the price, but if you need it, it's certainly available and it's getting more common. And I think eventually you'll see it probably on everybody's home. I don't know if I'd retrofit mine with it, but in fact, I know I wouldn't because I never had a need for it. It mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense to me. I've lived all these years and never needed one. What's going to make me need it now? That's the way I look at it. I had no choice. When they put those two well, that's panels... What I mean. you, yeah. They put the two new panels on the house. I had to get them because that's part of the deal now. Well, and that's right. And it, it depends. Are you in a place where they require it or not? Most places with the electrical uh, NEC, the National Electric Code, if it's written in that code and you're working with electrician, they're going to follow the code, period. That's how they keep their license. Especially if it's right touch and they do everything right. There's a reason right is the first word in their name. Because there, there, there are no corners cut when right touch comes out. No. But I'll tell you this, though, Charlie, real quick. And in plumbing, too, there's a lot of things they're made to do that a lot of electricians and a lot of plumbers and maybe HVAC techs, whoever is ruled by these, uh, these conglomerates, they don't really agree with they're going to do it because they have to do it and they're not, it's not going to hurt anybody. But is there really a need for some of this stuff? Behind the scenes when... I'm talking with a lot of these guys. They understand that. I know, Tom, we have to do it, but it's, I don't really see the need for it. Yeah. But it's a way to sell product, too. So you have both sides of the fence playing each other on it. But a good electrician is going to follow the rules, and that's the only way he should do it. I will tell you. That's that right. If touch I, electrical. Before, <laughs> before I got a surge suppressor, I'd rather have a power conditioner because a power conditioner will do more to protect your equipment. You know, if you go and see like a, um, a, a big time concert show or something where, it, mm. I mean, a big enough concert where they're running generators outside. Like if you see like uh, the Today Show or something set up broadcasting remote, you'll always have generators outside running. They don't trust shore power. They want their own electric running. There's always a power conditioner there that makes sure that that sine wave is staying exactly the where it's supposed to be when it's running, when that power is coming through, because that'll do more damage than anything else to your equipment. You know, when power varies slightly, it's not the spike as much as that that break in the wave that'll screw up the all the electronics in, and especially if it's something's running on a computer circuit or something. So that'd be my advice if you're going to put money into something so, for what there that's worth. But I'm not Tom Tynan. I'm, well, I'm not an electronics person either, and we have questions about electronics all the time. We have to refer to Will. Mm -hmm. And I think we have one coming up here today about some stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of yeah. leading into that. Yeah, in fact, we do. If we, When we get done doing this live with y'all, um, Tom and I hang around because he likes to answer questions for everybody. We have like five, seven questions We because we post a new one of these videos every day. We're going to tape them in just a minute put them up, and we put them up one a day um, about somebody who has this really weird problem with his electric where his uh, cable modem and his satellite dish keep rebooting about every five minutes something's causing that to happen and we're going to talk about it in one of those daily ask Tom videos and uh, in fact i talked to will about that problem and he's interested in talking to the guy and going out and if if he if he is right about what he suspects it is we're going to do a video about it because i'm here to tell you i had that same problem for a while at my house 
And, yeah, uh, it, and, and we it, won't it, talk about it much here, but there's a lot of ways to get around it. But I suspected the same thing Will did with what's called an open neutral. But uh, that's for another time. But well, now, the way is, to ruin you the won't dr- see it with you. Uh, I was teasing it so people would go watch it. Now you've told them how yeah, the I know, story but they don't ends. know what that is. Open news, nobody knows what that is. But mm-hmm. it'll, it'll be something that won't affect the lights, won't affect normal stuff. But mm-hmm. electronics, and Charlie, you know this with your studio and everything. Electronics are incredibly sensitive, some of them. And they can't handle what a normal light bulb can handle. The only thing more sensitive than, than the electronics around here are the people who run them. So yeah, they can be a little testy. Yes. <laughs> Got one more question for you from Alfred in Rosenberg. He says, "I have a house above the land. I spray uh, a house ab- above the land, and I spray foam under the house. It was closed cell foam, and it's open under the house. Did I do the wrong thing? Because it, I did it because the floors were cold. I, I, I think you're getting his meaning here. He's just wondering, did he make a mistake doing that, Tom? Only time will tell." Some homes that react different than others. It depends how high the ground is. You know, all these little details would make a lot of difference. I hope he didn't. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. I'd forget about it now. Uh, right now, this time of year in Houston, I think people would appreciate a cold floor. So that would always be an advantage because it's so hot out. Uh, but in the winter time, it can be uncomfortable. And we're always going to be uncomfortable in Houston when we get really cold weather. And the fact of the matter is we hate winter. So people are incredibly sensitive to cold weather and if we're up north it wouldn't even mean a thing to people i don't think he's going to have a huge problem my biggest concern with something like that is you have a lot of ventilation under the home so it stays dry but most importantly if you have wood floors in your home and you put it up under uh traditional wood floors not engineered engineered you probably get away with okay but the traditional wood floors you could have cupping problems and and some weird problems with it but only time will tell i'm not going to tell you oh it's a disaster waiting for that to happen because nobody will know till it does. I mm. just I wouldn't have done it that way, but I like to see things breathe. This is closed cell, so the, the the rule is if you don't want it to breathe at all, use the closed cell. So maybe that will help even more than if you used open cell and it trapped all that moisture in there. Mm. Time will tell. Yeah, it's all. Don't lose sleep. Just go with it. So we are going to um, we're going to land the plane here, but next week. Um, just want you to know, next week is, I believe, it's the last, isn't it? Next week, the last Thursday of the month? Last, I think. Yeah, for Thursday? Is. Yeah, it's well, the no, last. Well, no, the, 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 the next Thursday is, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's 29, 30, 30, it's the 1st of July. No, next week is, yeah, next week is the 23rd and then the 30th. Okay, so we're still okay. a week out. Okay. I'm like, okay, you know, I had to. Had, I can't keep with dates. show prep. What day it is. No, I know. It's like, <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, business has been so crazy. I, I was I on an airplane my, last night. I don't even know where I am. I was telling my stepson <laughs> yesterday, business has been so off the hook since the beginning of the year around here. I haven't slept in my own bed five nights in a row since May. So <laughs> it's been kind of crazy. But anyway, the long and short of it is that in two weeks, we'll have Danny Milliken here with us um, to answer questions. So next week, it'll just be Tom and me again, and then Danny will join us. He's here the last week, the last Wednesday of, the last Thursday, right? Thursday. No, wait a minute. Hold on. No, yeah. That's next the week is Next week is the last Thursday. So he will be here next week. I'm thinking it's yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, it has to be because the, the first is a Thursday, the first of July. Yes, is it Thursday. is. That's right. So next Thursday, like I was saying, next <laughs> yes. Thursday, Danny will be here. I'm glad that's what happens ne- when you sleep around, Charlie. Yeah, sleep around. Yeah, that's right. Tulsa <laughs> yes. and Richmond uh, and Colorado. But no, but yes. Danny will be here next Thursday. So the point of the que- the point is that if you <laughs> yes. want to get some input from the Home Show go. Garden Pro uh, ring mass ring leader, the 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 guy who keeps these people together, get us your questions this week, and Danny will answer them next week on this very same program, uh, along with Tom, mm-hmm. who answers questions all weekend for you. Yes, I do. I'm just swallowing my water here. I felt like Marco Rubio for a minute. Uh, anyway, I'm on Saturdays from 9 to 12 and Sundays 8 to 11 on Sports Radio 610 and at homeshowradio.com. And you are welcome to send us your questions anytime you want. Just click on that Ask Tom button right there. Fill out this form. Send it in. We'll answer them. We'll answer them here on this show um, or we'll answer them in our daily Ask Tom videos that we do. We post a new one every day. and We're going to go fixing to go record seven of them right now as soon as we're done talking to you. So, and that is it for this week. We'll see you next week. We hope you have a blessed week and uh, catch Tom this week and on Sports Radio 610. Got a question? 
Pro.